go ahead. And welcome back Movie to the new year cool. in the same campaign. Yes, yes. Same campaign. So close to uh to getting out of and getting out of this section of of Prismir. Um do you guys out of curiosity, because it has been a long time, do you guys remember anything? We beat the witch. Yeah. The little bit I have is that uh yes, we beat the witch. There was a she had a, I don't know if we were supposed to see it or didn't see it, but there was a guest with her. Yes. And we kind of chased her, or followed the guest into this other room, which was the kitchen. Yes, so yeah, the room you're in now is where she ran into, yeah. And uh, I have notes that we freed a satyr who was, mm -hmm. uh, it looks like he was prisoner, mm -hmm. hanging outside the window. And um, there's something about detect magic. There was a couple potions in the kitchen. Uh, uh, the potions were in the in the room where you fought Bablorna. But yes, you did find a couple potions. Because there was a, a cabinet glowed with te uh, magic. Right. And it was a Franken-cat. Yep. <laughs> So the potions that were in there was a pink one said shrink, yellow is grow, and blue is vanish. That guy. Here. I tried to catch him and tame him, but he ran out a window. Oh, I don't know that he ran out a window. I think he just kind of ran. bounced away. Yeah. Because okay. if he jumped out a window, he would have fallen into the water, probably to his undeath. <laughs> but... <laughs> It's definitely not a six-legged cat like the kitten of what's her name back in the festival. Oh no, it's not a six-legged. It's not a displacer beast. Maybe. That was it. Was clearly a a house cat that looked like it maybe had parts from a few different house cats. Oof. Yeah. Taxidermized and brought to undeath. So that's what I have. Uh, if somebody else can fill in some gaps. Seems pretty good from what I remember. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, those are the, definitely the, the, the high points. Um, you, it, Bablorna was willing to cut a deal with you, or maybe not cut a deal, but, you know, if you did some errands for her. She might have considered to help you, but uh, she was sort of chit-chatting, and I think you guys were not wanting to put up with her with her deal-making. And due to some incredible roles on y'all's end, and some really poor roles on my end, <laughs> that, that turned into a real quick fight. Um, and she, uh, when Vierna got the killing blow, and when she when she slit her throat, you may remember uh, during the battle, her dry skin was slowly flaking off, and when she slit her throat, she just sort of, her skin continued to flake off and flake off and flake off until she dusted away. So there's not even a body remaining uh, where you slayed her, slain her, whatever. Um, but yeah, and then you, you made your way into this kitchen where you met Bloody Toes here, the uh, uh, the red cap who... She was trying to cut meat up at the time, and some vultures were in there fighting uh, fighting over this raw meat, and she asked for your help. You helped her shoo off the vultures, and that's when you saw a naked satyr hanging out in a in a cage. He was um, <clears throat> imprisoned by Bavlorna, and uh, he suspects that she may have eaten him because he was sitting in a cage outside this kitchen. Um... And uh, he is quite grateful that uh, you saved him, and that you you killed Bavlorna. And uh, he, I believe, we left off with you guys telling him the tale, and he 
Uh, he's a bard whose instrument was taken from him uh, from Bavlorna, but he's sitting there trying to recount the tale in song. And I'm taking notes. <laughs> yeah. What was a witch from Nantucket? <laughs> Well, does this fix all the, like, um, bad water and all that stuff that's going on now that she's gone? Oh, importantly, where's your stuff? Oh, and as a reminder, because it has been several sessions, yeah, uh, Rabbit and Vierna, you are confident your stuff is in this hut somewhere. Like, you feel that. You feel that pool in your gut. Mm. Maybe it's in here, and uh, Bryn's going to just dive into a cover and just start throwing shit out, like, haphazardly. In one of these cupboards in the kitchen? Yeah, he's just throwing stuff out haphazardly. He'll, like, pull out something and, like, look at it. Nope, that doesn't look like... But he has no, actually, no clue what he's looking for. He's just making a mess, really. <laughs> yeah, so... Chaos. So, yeah, in the cupboard, you just see, yeah, plates, bowls, pots, pans... Typical kitchenware, but yeah, you're throwing that out all over the place. And Bloody tells, "Ah, you're, you're making a mess. You're making a mess." What, what, what? Sorry, I'm just like looking for, um, looking for some stuff that it was stolen. Well, I didn't steal anything. Well, no, but like the the witch that lived here did. <clears throat> you don't see like a little like um, kitten with like six legs and tentacles growing out of its back, have you? <laughs> She looks at you with this really weird, like, what? Sounds like a monstrosity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of is, kind of, kind of is. But it's like just a cub, right? We're going to try to get it back to its mom. Um, but we're also looking for, like, um, and I'll point to Rabbit. And, like, he's, he doesn't sing good anymore. So we've got to find something to help him make. She stole his, his song sense, I guess, as you could call it. Oh, mate, she stole your ability to sing. Oh, she stole my instrument. Look at us. <gasps> maybe maybe they're in the same place. Does she have a music room? Eh. She, she takes her treasure up to her bedroom. Ah, <gasps> that's the place. Which way? Uh, She's going to point upstairs and say... Just up above us. How do we get there? Oh, staircase through that door. And uh, there's a, uh, a, a, little, a, little, a little, she points to this door. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, you probably do remember. It has been several weeks, but you do know there's a staircase on the other side of that door. So, Brent, I'll head that way. <clears throat> Rabbit, if he's uh, feeling the itch or pool, he will... Uh... Definitely be all curious and go up in there too. I will move your token as well. So yeah, you guys head back into the room, um, into like a living room area where you fought Bavlorna. Um, and you are you all who's who's heading up the stairs first? I'll lead up. I will. <laughs> uh, roll a dexterity saving. No, I'm just kidding. I'll plop you up there. There we go. Are you all going up? I can just drag you all up if you're all going up. Yeah, I'll go up. Okay. As, as we start climbing the stairs, Fen's just muttering to whoever's next to him. He's like, hmm. she's keeping a chest up here. Oh, it ain't her toy chest. That'd just be frankly disturbing. Well, you don't like playing with toys anymore, Finn. Yeah, I'll tell you about it when you're older. <laughs> And to stick you all, everybody is now in this tiny little cramp. Did Apple Bottom go upstairs, <laughs> or did she sit? In this... I imagine like she's like in the stairwell. Bryn, like... Yeah, I imagine Brynn didn't say anything, and so she just starts to follow, and then like she sort of gets stuck in the stairwell. Yes. It's like, no, no, stay there, Apple. Watch the stairs. Don't let anyone up. Oh, but I don't want to see if she stole mushrooms. If I find any, I'll bring them down to you. <gasps> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, oh no, I closed the thing. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, you walk up the stairs and uh, 
those of you who have a little harder time seeing can see this room is actually well lit. Above you, a ball of light ab bobs above in the rafters, casting shadows all over this room in which the owner's messy habits are on full display. Rumpled and moldering rugs share floor space with food scraps, stack of dirty dishes, and tipped over clay pots whose plants have long since died. Uh, a bed that occupies the one corner of the room has a pile of straw in place of a mattress. And in the opposite corner uh, stands a down, uh, so yeah, down here in this corner, uh, stands a squat chest of drawers with, oh no, up, up here is a squat chest of drawers with the watering can atop it. Uh, and then down here is a wooden chest with a sturdy iron padlock. And yes. this, this is a window, and this is a door as well over here. That's I'm going to point to the chest and say, that's where I keep something valuable in there. Steady, lad. There may be a trap. And then Brett will back up and hide behind somebody. Maybe somebody else um, that knows stuff about traps should open it. Like you, Rabbit. So your Rabbit's going to uh, kind of poke around tentatively um, around that chest and see if uh, he notices anything odd about the lock or what have you. Um, You can, uh, if you're just looking, yeah, you can make a, uh, what is that, an investigation check. All right. Someone make that roll for me because oh. my roll can act acting like an asshole right now. Investigation. You got a 16. So, um... Sorry, I'm just reading it. Uh, it it's it's a pad it's it's a chest with a padlock on it, and iron clawed feet with the initials B B crudely curved onto its lid. Uh, if you've got thieves tools on you, you think you might be able to open it. Um, you don't know where the key might Did be. Did one of us find? I think I. I'm wondering. I could have remember if we found the key. Yeah, I think you, someone does. Jingle Jingle gave us keys to things, I thought. Oh, I I think I used it. I have, I had an iron key for Bev Lorna that got unchecked, and I do still have the key with the frog's head, though. Um, I know the iron key that you got from Bev Lorna opened the chest that the potions were in, and that's what freed Vansel, the satyr, okay. from, uh, from the cage he was in. But I do still have the key with the frog's head, so we yes. can use that if we want. Um, well, I don't have any thieves tools. Well, <laughs> I was about to say, well, I, have, I can use my thieves tools, or we can try this key, or save the key for later, and use my thieves tools. Oh, why not both? Vienna, make a perception check for me. I will try. Um, <laughs> roll 20 is... Uh-oh. Not working. <laughs> uh, I might have to close it out again. Here, I can... Roll 20. Oh, nope, I clicked persuasion, not perception. My bad. 17. Uh... I know I put you there, but we'll pretend you're standing there. You open the glance over, and the door Bryn is standing in front of has a um, has a has a handle, but above the handle is a lock that looks like a frog's head with the mouth where the key goes. Oh, well, oh then. there you go. I guess we'll use the frog's head key. So yeah. Uh... Put the frog's head key in instead of wasting the thieves' tools. Um, you could still try to open the chest with thieves' tools if you'd like, but you notice that that key might go to this door. 
Yeah, I mean, I'll try it. Yeah, uh, I, it's, it's up to you. <laughs> these tools can break, right? Like, if you mess up badly. You know? Yeah, yeah. If it's, like, a, like I, th I think nat one is when they break. So, okay. Just in case, I'll uh, go ahead and use the key. Or try to use the key and see if it works. So are you using the key on the door? Oh, uh, wait. I'm opening the chest. I'm sorry. Um, right? <clears throat> I'm opening a chest in the key. Yes. Yeah, so that frog head is on this door. But you can certainly try the key on the chest. I just want to make sure I know what you're doing. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, sorry. These tools on the chest. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're fine. No worries. I just want to make sure I was clear. And then... uh, Go ahead. Did you want me to roll that for you? Are you still having... I think I can try to roll it. I can see Voldemort falling apart, so that's a good sign. Um, what is that roll, though? Dexterity? Well, it would be or... dexterity plus your proficiency. Because, yeah, you don't have thieves' tools listed on your... But I know as a rogue. Okay. Oh well. my gosh. <laughs> Son of a... <laughs> Hang on. Yeah, Born you... Born rogue. Yeah. You're able to... Click. Um... And it opens up seamlessly. <clears throat> uh, so inside, as you open it up, you look inside, you see a marionette doll. It has faces on opposite sides of its head. One is of a moon and the other is of a sun. <clears throat> you see a ticket from the Witchlight Carnival, but this one looks different than the one ones you guys just bought three days ago. Yes, it's only been three days. Um, it looks a little older, a little aged, and instead of Mr. Witch and Mr. Light being on the ticket, uh, it's this woman, this woman with, with a dark-skinned woman with dark curly hair and ears that point up and go on forever. Um, standing there and um it says uh i sold invites you to the witchlight carnival uh you also find uh three spell scrolls of identify all tied together with a string yeah. <laughs> you should feel really proud of yourself as you're looking at the lock you're like man this was a really hard like this was this might have been magically locked, in fact. Uh. Oh. <laughs> Baron is just kind of like looking at the lock, like, okay. Yeah. Like, let's study this, because. Yeah. <laughs> uh, does that name Isol mean anything? Does, uh, have we heard that before? Uh. No, I, you know, uh, Rabbit can make a a history check. He may have heard that working at the Bushlight Carnival, if he's interested. Yeah, yeah. Let me tell you the thing about uh, I sold is and, and then I'll roll the, <laughs> history. the dice. Oh my goodness. Yeah, uh, she was the original owner of the carnival. She was the OG. <laughs> And uh, sometime oh, back, way like, before, way, way before, before, yeah, <laughs> way before you joined the carnival, uh, she and uh, the uh, uh, Mr. Witch and Mr. Light sort of swapped, swapped places in a sense, and now they run the carnival. And uh, all you know yeah, is that they, this, uh, they love it here. They love it there. Here's they the were really the now where they switched. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yep. Very curious. Sorry. That's annoying. No, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure you heard me. <laughs> yeah, I'm just uh, playing an asshole. 
so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Ansel is like, oh, another st story to tell. Oh, great. Uh, yeah, so that's what I say. That's what I know. She used to run it. And the two guys, like, apparently they swapped power. Made some deal, I don't know. Hmm. Why would she have a ticket? old one too hmm that's suspicious yes. uh, who knows <laughs> but what about that uh, dolly there does that do anything that creeps me out I don't want to play with it yeah that thing needs fire Oh, hey, Jackson. These are like some magical writing paper things, right? That's something you can use. Hey, Steve. <laughs> Steve will know. Nobody, nobody answers you. Steve! <laughs> I throw something at him. Oh, you're so... Oh. He like flies out of the life. My name is Sir Talavar. That's what I said. Um... Again, where, where does she keep? Do you know where she keeps all her stuff? You were a prisoner here, right? Do you know anything that can help us find I was, stuff? I was a prisoner here, but I was trapped downstairs in a cage. I oh. never made my way up here. I would have thought a treasure chest would be a great place for treasure, but that bloody toes lady said it was up here. Is mm. that door locked? And he points to this door. Yeah. Well, you know, the, uh, not everything is as, as it seems. Uh, maybe we should take a look at this cabinet, this uh, dresser. Maybe she keeps them in her sock drawer. <laughs> Do hags wear socks? Was oh, she wearing sweet. socks when we killed her? Huh? No, she was barefoot. Ah, gross, though. I wish she had been wearing socks. Yeah. <laughs> that skin was just flaking off on her feet everywhere. Mm. Gross. Do we want to try checking this out? Worth a shot, I think. The the cabinet? Yeah, the dresser here with the watering pot? Yeah, you can... Uh... If you are you just poking around, you can make an investigation check or. or... Once again, we're in a hag's house. <laughs> I'm just a little, a little tentative, hesitant to. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'll go ahead and start. Uh, I'll pull open drawers and. and... So oh no! <laughs> so good. You open so a drawer and, and, and inside you see what looks like clothes, and you pull out the first thing you pull you you pull out the first thing on top, and it's this old discolored uh, giant dress that has been um, uh, what is the word? fitted to her large body and it kind of you kind of end up just getting stuck in the dress and so you don't see anything else <laughs> I don't think I found anything except for uh, yeah nothing well, in here I can go and investigate or try to investigate too I fumble um, my way around the room to get you space. So that would be an investigation, right? Yeah, yeah. Nope. <clears throat> so yeah, you find um, the drawers are full of clothes, and um, all of which it looks like were handmade or garments that were taken and adjusted 
to fit her odd shaped body. So, hmm. and and again, all of them are quite discolored from age and kind kind of equally the the bullywugs were wearing royalty like garb, so kind of looked fancy, but they were discolored and gross, and the fabric looks somewhat similar to some of those outfits that you saw. Can we, like, maybe bust this door down? Yes. Ben is going to just slip those spell scrolls into Droxon's pouch as he passes by. Don't is forget about them. Picking up the ticket and the marionette, or are we just leaving him there? I'm scared of the marionette, but I'll pick up the ticket. Ben will say, this might be a clue. I'll shove it in a, a bag. <coughs> Right, Finn will just shrug and, and chuck the marionette with no fuss into his satchel. Yeah, I was going to say, why don't we take it? It might help us sometime. I don't know. Those don't really belong to us. They belong to someone else. As you pick up the marionette, her head slowly turns. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, would we want to use one of the scrolls on the marionette, maybe? Hey, Droxa, is this thing even magical or what? Can I check it? Yeah, you could do like an arcana check. That would probably, yeah. Um, you don't think it's magical. It's just must have had some meaning to Babylorna. You're not not sure what, but it's certainly interesting. Yeah, but not magical per se. All right, then. who knows. It'll be able to trade it for something. This realm works weird like that. Yeah. Walks over to the door and just gestures with a mock bow to Vera. Yeah, as you approach the door, you see the same thing. There's just this iron uh, handle, but above it is a lock, and the lock... Like the mechanism looks like a frog's head with the mouth open where the key would go. Yeah, um, I try to use the key and see what happens, or if it even fits in the first one. Uh, yeah, you put the the key in and you hear a a, a click as it unlocks. The door seems to unlock for you. I, uh, step aside and, like, check go first. You are a lady. <laughs> Not everybody all at once now. Oh, I'll go. <laughs> Brave Brent sticks his head in and sort of just looks around for a moment. Uh, if you just stick your head in, you see this room is quite dark. There are no windows in here and no source of light. So with your lack of dark vision... It's dark. I can't yeah. see anything. Can't you do that, like, globe light thing, Verna? Can I use that again? Yeah. Yes. I created a little dancing light. Can I... How do I do that? There we go. There we go. 
And then you can drag it onto the page and put it wherever you want it. But yeah, I'll plop one just inside, because I imagine the door's open, so I'll plop one inside the door. I know you, you can make four of them, I believe. Yeah. Uh, those. Uh, yeah, four. Copy and paste the arcane edition. That magical spell. I will move rabbit. So that, I don't know if. There we go. You can see there. I'll keep the NPCs out. <clears throat> so as you as you walk in now, there's a little bit of light with these dancing lights, so you can see a little bit better. Um, I'll add the other ones too. There we go. Um, <clears throat> this musty room looks like a miser's attic. Lying in tall heaps are discarded blankets, quilts, cushions, and clothing of all shapes and sizes, not to mention musical instruments, toys, dolls, jewelry boxes, flower vases, a child-sized cactus, ca uh, child-sized casket, and broken furniture. <clears throat> Among the heaps of junk are a few oddities, uh, including a white porcelain jar with chicken legs standing on a table, a fancy helm, uh, I think the chicken legs, where is that? I think that's over here. Um, a fancy helm um, up here, a uh, helmet is placed on a faceless head of a wooden mannequin, and a five-foot-long bronze statue of a giant frog squatting in a corner, its mouth agape and filled with impenetrable darkness. I ain't sticking my head in there. Oh, Rabbit's going to go straight for those instruments and start to plucking or blowing or whatever. Like yeah. in the candy store. Bansel is also, like, he's running here. And, uh, uh, you two, I'm sure, have fun. But he immediately, he finds what is his, uh, his loot. And he's, oh, my loot! And he picks it up. I've missed ya! Look at all these other instruments, though! And they start rocking out, I'm sure. Loot? Where? <laughs> All of it is loot. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Fen is going to stand right in front of that frog with his wooden shield held up to kind of... Just in case something's about to like shoot out of that damn thing. Kind of putting the shield right in front of its mouth. Blocking it. So if anything does happen, it's going to happen to him. Are you just standing there, or are you... I'm, I'm just standing there. I'm not interacting with it. I'm just okay, holding okay. the shield in front of the gaping maw. Sure. <laughs> yeah, you stand there. You, um... Uh, you don't... Hear, feel, see any... Yeah, you, you, you see what I described. If you're looking on the other side of your shield, but... As yeah. of right now, nothing's happening. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but this thing makes me nervous. I can usually see through darkness just fine, but I can't see through that. That's yeah. not right. Exactly, yeah. Even those of you with dark vision, when you look in, it's just eerily dark inside. When I, uh, I'm, like, jamming away, and I hear him talk about that, I look at it. Can I use my bardic knowledge to, uh, maybe like, ah, oh, I've heard of something like that from such and such story. And roll a knowledge to kind of see what it, if it's something I might recognize. I, I would think that would be Arcana, unless you think that's something else. Oh, no, that's cool. I okay. think this, if the, the skill or whatever, like Jack of All Trades, lets me um, do anything. Do anything? Otherwise, need be trained, I think, or something. Right, you add more proficiency to it, which I think the character sheet... Does that automatically for you? Okay, yeah, I don't know. Sorry. I don't know either, actually. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it does. Okay. So I will just roll that arcana for you. Oh, no! <laughs> uh, oh, no, wait, you rolled a 14. I just saw the 4. Um, 14 is plenty good. Um, <clears throat> you 
this is an oddity. You haven't necessarily heard of giant frogs with gaping mouths into darkness. Um, but you've heard of things like, um, uh, uh, like the Astral Sea or Demi Plains or, um, you know, areas that are just endless and everlasting and, uh, so maybe that's a portal. Yeah. So like, yeah, that might uh, that might be a portal. So that's all I know. <laughs> Portals where I wonder. I'm gonna say if Raxon's interested, you you can also roll an Arcana check on that, as you are trained in. Oh no! <laughs> Is it now? Is it a portal yeah. indeed? Oh, no. Yeah. That's odd that you could see that and I couldn't. <laughs> well, uh, maybe it's because I've been in this weird carnival for a while and gets a little bit in my brain. Oh, shoot. I'm sorry. So, is your stuff here or not? I don't know. Does Rabbit feel any kind of particular draw um that he's been longing for roll an insight check because you know it's in this house oh that's me because you don't have or let me help you out let me help you out <laughs> yeah so sorry um, kind, of, kind of annoying you uh Man, you're struggling to trust your gut on this one, but you, you're starting to think maybe it's in the frog. Shoot. Well, yeah, so I must be smoking some stuff with that uh, satyr. <laughs> and I decide I'm going to go crawl into that frog. Are you nuts? Going in the frog? Maybe you should like tie a rope around your waist or something in case you like slide in there. Who knows what's in there? It's the way to eternity and happiness, man. It's all about the frog. You tell him, yeah! Hypno toad. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm gonna go try and crawl in there unless they're gonna stop me. Her accent's going to watch with great interest. So you just crawl in no rope or anything? I just want to make sure I, we're setting the scene clearly. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm like, okay, I think it's in there. It's definitely in there. So That's you going watch in. Rabbit. And the mouth is large enough. A, 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 a halfling can easily crawl inside this mouth. And bloop, he crawls inside. And uh, disappears into darkness. Those of you on the outside of the frog do not see him. He is gone. Rabbit, you look around you and you see nothing but darkness. Um, but it feels as though you're you're swimming through cool mud. Like it's a little a little thick. It almost feels like mud, thick water, and eels or feels like eels are swimming around your legs, around your arms. I'll be like, man, that satyr has some harsh chronic. And, um, yeah, I'll try and look around <laughs> and see what I can see. You or feel? You I am the universe. <laughs> right now, you don't see or feel anything other than what, yeah, you see darkness and you sort of feel just this, it's nice and cool in here and it feels like Something like eels is swimming, circling you. A little uh, tingly. I'm gonna yell, Far out! And, <laughs> um, I don't know. Can I swim? <laughs> yeah, you can move a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll you, uh, when you scream that, it just, it's like the opposite of an echo. It's like dead air. It just sort of, it doesn't really go anywhere. And um, 
I don't the re- the rest of you I don't hear that. I think he probably having not heard echo, he'd probably start to freak out and uh start into panic mode. And that's my turn. <laughs> It's been about a minute, and Rabbit is still inside this frog, and you guys don't see him. Did we tie a rope around his waist? No, (laughs) he just jumped in. (laughs) Okay. Um, So we go in and try to get him? Um, so I have a flask of glow worms. If I, like, I don't know. Like, start to put it inside the mouth of the frog. Does it light up the space at all? Or does the, like, frog's mouth devour the light? Oh, that is a great question. Dang, devour the light. So good. Mm. (laughs) I am looking things up. I think that if you were like, if you throw one in, it glows, but the light doesn't spread. Okay. If that makes sense. It's like you can see that thing because it is emitting a little bit of light, but it doesn't spread the light. Okay, that won't work for what I was hoping. All right. Ben gets his rope out, has around one of his legs. Drops his shield, pulls out a rapier, his uh, dagger, and he starts crawling in. But you're tying yourself off. <laughs> tying himself off okay. to like a chest or a box or something like that, and he's gonna crawl in. And he can't see in here, right? Uh, right, yeah. So as you crawl in, you see darkness. All right. Okay. So he... To clarify, the dancing lights are within a space that I can see, correct? Um... You can create... Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, I'm gonna hand bend the glow warm thing anyway, just in case, see what happens. As he's crawling into the frog mouth, also. Alright. So he's crawling around there. His, he's focused on, on finding finding his little buddy. So yeah, as you crawl in, you disappear into darkness. And, and the rest of you on the outside, you can see the rope that he, he, that he tied around the chest goes into the frog and then as soon as it hits the darkness it disappears and you don't see the rope beyond that you don't see him and as you enter I, similarly um it's cool and it feels almost like like watery mud thick water that you're swimming through with um or flo- you're like floating like floating swimming like you're not it's not like you walked in and you're walking it's this weird space um and it feels like there's eel swimming around your legs your arms um and right now you don't see rabbit He's thinking, it's like, God damn it, rabbit, where are you? What you you say to rabbit, and two things happen. One, um, rabbit, you are whoosh, pulled by something, and you come into contact with um, uh, Finn's hand. And then, I guess you've got your sword. You're holding both your sword and your shield, so your hands are actually un- unavailable. No, the... I mentioned I dropped the shield and just pulled out oh. like a dagger. Okay, to, dagger. To the hands. My apologies. Okay, so yeah, so then he's able to like come hand to hand with you, and then you also see um, a stuffed rabbit kind of floats within grasping range as well. So he, Finn hesitates for a moment, grabs the the stuffed rabbit, pulls it into living rabbit's grasp. Like, kind of like just shoves it into his chest. Like, here, hold this. 
and he just instantly thinks 40 year old scotch uh, a bottle of 40 year old scotch appears <laughs> in your hand or it, is, it sort of like comes into your hand yeah this is awesome uh, he then uh, grabs the rope with his free hand and, and pulls himself back out or yanks on the rope or whatever you can do to get back out of here so yeah, uh, as long as yeah you you can pull yourself up. I don't know if your friends are helping you, but I imagine you'll be able to get out pretty easily. Uh, and you can throw rabbit out <laughs> out of the mouth. Yeah, if he if he grabs me, I like grab onto him like the person who's drowning who's gonna drown you. I'm like oh, oh, thank you. I'm assuming, like, speaking and breathing is probably not viable in this muddy solution that's in here, so... <laughs> well, I, well, you can you can breathe for about ten minutes. Okay. <laughs> right, and I get... So we extricate ourselves. And is... Are we, like, covered in gunk, or... No! Is it just, like, a sensory thing? It was, like, a sensory thing, yeah. Alright, so, uh, Fen sets rabbit and rabbit down. <laughs> Like right back and forth with the rabbit in one hand and sucking my thumb. Right. <laughs> Wide eyes in the other, like excited. It's like, dudes, this is awesome. You just go in there and you think what you want and it comes to you. Look. Go in and he there. holds up the, the four year old scotch. What'd you say, Rabbit? <laughs> I, I say, never go in there. Terrible idea. <laughs> I want to try, and I'm going to stick my hand in there and think mushrooms. So yeah, you're able to just stick your, your hand in, and, and similarly, you feel this cold, mud-like sensation and these, like, eel-like things swimming around. Ew, gross. And, and as soon as you say mushrooms, you feel like a, a pile, I guess, of mushrooms appear in your hand. Yank them out of there. You got some mushrooms. I don't know if they... We'll say they're fine. They're just mushrooms. Perfect. So, if you guys, like, stick your hands in there and think of, like, whatever the hell it is that you're missing. You know, the things that she took from you? I bet you you get it right back. Worth a shot, you I go, go first. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, oh, oh, sorry. I thought you said you go first, and I, I will go first. No, uh, you, you, you. Okay. <laughs> I want to see you do it. <laughs> he's he's uh, hugging his bunny right now. <laughs> Vierna uh, kind of sticks her hand in and says, "Lock." You just say lie. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Nothing happens if you just say lie, unfortunately. You just feel, uh, again, that cold sensation. I say kitten. Oh, no. This makes me sad. Um, what would show up? Um, maybe she's got another undead taxidermized kitten in there that'll sh <laughs> so you pull that out well at least uh patches has a friend now i guess yeah right yeah <laughs> hmm um okay i try one more time to say the ability to tell a lie do you say that you feel a ring slip onto your uh, your your pointer finger and you pull out your hand instinctually as this something comes on your finger and you see a beautiful silver ring with a with a blue gemstone in it and <clears throat> you can feel you are immediately attuned to this item okay.
So once I, I kind of back away and like inspect the ring. And, and you also could feel that you you are able to lie again. You just sort of have that like like you feel it in your bones. You've got your ability to lie back, and it was trapped seemingly inside this ring. Hmm. That work or not? Um. Hey, rabbit, you are a very good storyteller. No. Ouch. <laughs> oh. Oh. Either way, you're able to say oh, that. No. I don't know what you were going for. Oh, yeah, I was trying to remember what his, if it was that he can't tell logical stories. <laughs> Or I couldn't remember what the uh... <laughs> that works. Yeah, <laughs> I've lost all artistic talents. <laughs> oh, some illogical stories are good. So, <laughs> like, well, seems to be working. All right, Rabbit, your turn. The rabbit will go over there and kind of cringe and slowly put his hand in the darkness and um, say, my musical muse and artistic views. You um, say that a, a hard object comes into your hand pull your hand out and you're looking at a uh, a beautiful book purple cover a magical unicorn front uh roll a d8 for me Back oh you in can't my do days, that television was called books <laughs> i'll roll a d8 for you thank you um, man. uh as you do, do you open the book heck yes so as you open the book, when you first open it, you just see blank pages. And then on the front, it begin letters begin to just write themselves out. And you see the, the on like the front page it says the siren's last call on this beautiful large calligraphy. And as you turn the page, you begin to read the story of the siren's last call um, about uh, a, a, a a pirate out on the waters who finds a siren and and, and truly falls in love with her and she him and and she uh, uh, deems to never use her magic ability to trick people again for she has also finally found love um, and for the uh, next 24 hours uh, you know the shape water cantrip and, and you also find yourself immediately attuned to this book and its magic abilities <clears throat> awesome I start to uh, tell everyone, let me tell you about this. <laughs> and it's very awesome and exciting. Uh, Vansel is, that's incredible. You'll have stories to tell for days, weeks, months. Anyone else? All sorts of neat shit in here. What, uh, some places, some of these boxes were broken, or some of them were still intact? Um, those boxes? Crates? I, yeah, or... those, yeah. Um, a lot of them are intact, some are open, but they contain a variety of objects. There's a box full of jewelry, um, a box full of flower vases. Um, you see uh, boxes of clothes and blankets and quilts.
I want to go through some of that jewelry. Sure. Um, is there anything that looks, uh, I don't know. We haven't really been in this world for very long. Anything that looks like it could be, uh, from another type of environment? Oh, yeah, yeah. Roll an investigation check. That's what I'm great. <laughs> you do, I mean, you, yeah, there's a variety of jewelry here. <clears throat> you see um, some cheaper jewelry, just, you know, of, of, of cheaper quality, you know, beads and whatnot. Um, you see maybe some jewelry that looks, might, might be made of, like, maybe made of gold and silver, but maybe it's actually fake gold and silver. Um, but yeah, you, you see some jewelry that looks, you, you, amongst this, you do see some jewelry that looks a little unique, different than you've ever seen before. Um, some that looks darker than what you've seen before, and just bright colors and all, all sorts of types of, of gemstones and, and uh, materials. You, you can't necessarily place. Uh, but there's several that you do recognize. You can't tell if any of this is of any value or anything. I, I'd like to uh, take some of that. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, um, <clears throat> obviously it's not doing any good here. That may be something we can barter with. <laughs> And the value isn't necessarily from us. The value is what other people think it would be. That is true. Rabbit's gonna kind of, as he's leafing through this book, he's gonna walk over to the frog and reach his hand bin. He's gonna say, "Long bottom leaf." <laughs> D20. I'll do that. Here, I'll <laughs> yes, for you. I know. <laughs> Forgetting that you. Yeah, you. Yeah, you know what? I'll give it to you. There's, there's a, uh, a single, a single, a long bottom leaf, a single leaf. I need to uh, relax my mind into this. If you know what I'm saying. <laughs> With all this this magic frog stuff going on, Fen's getting a, a little little greedy, and uh, he he nudges forward and sticks his hand in and and thinks of magic shield. Roll a d twenty, definitely. <laughs> That's definitely. A... Oof. Nothing. Nothing comes to you. Oh. Uh, magic shield powers activate. Yeah, it was worth a try. Anyway, well, let's anything? see what this this helmet here does. Was there so there's a, a helmet on a from... mannequin somewhere. Yeah, so over there, that mannequin looking thing that he's there's a helmet on top of it. Was there anything that was stole? Like anybody that we've met that told us that something was stolen that they wanted back? Yes. So, jingle jangle lost her um ability let me find the exact phrasing um her she had a fear of being locked outside of doors she lost her ability of being locked outside of doors by always having keys and um elmer lost his ability to uh to that one's a little weirder he basically couldn't keep living in his house because it was sinking so he lost his ability to live in his house. Like, <laughs> so she turned him into an Edder cat. So I guess jingle jangle. Then uh, I, I guess I'll, I. Hmm. Bryn's gonna try to stick. He's gonna stick both his hands in there, and then he's gonna think. Um, Jingle Jangle's courage, or maybe I'll think. So, 
what was taken was her fear of being locked. So she's not afraid of being locked up anymore. Yeah, so so what was taken was her fear of being locked out of a door. She lost her fear. Yeah. But so did she, she, did, she didn't lose her courage. She lost her fear. I just did, she, make... did she want it back? Uh... Yeah. Yeah. She, yeah, she, yeah. She was cursed. Basically. So, so she, I'm so I'm going to think Jingle Jangler's fear. Uh, as you say that, um, you feel a key. Last thing she probably wants is a key. Um, land in your come into your hand, and when you pull it out, it's got like a little skeleton head at the top. Perfect. A little, a little skeleton key. Cool. I'm gonna put that in a little top pocket. Um, so I remember. And then I'm going to think for Elmer, I'm going to think, um, so he lost his ability to live in his house. Right? Yeah. So I'm going to plunge my hands on that and I'm going to think, um, Elmer's house. Yeah. <laughs> this part is confusing. Um, you say that in, in, uh, in Elmer's your home, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, in your hand, you feel, uh, a pair of gloves and, uh, it's, you aren't sure what they do, but they're human gloves for human hand or, or humanoid hands and not, um, better cap hands. Um, so yeah, you assume they're for him. Excellent. Great. Um. And I'll look around at the others. Was there anything else that like people said was stolen that we were supposed to try to find? I know these rabbit folks said they stole all sorts of stuff, but it's other people if we tell other people they can just come and get their stuff, then maybe they'll just come and get their stuff. Uh Vance was gonna say, you know what? You guys have uh you've helped me out so much, I can I can actually go around town here and, and find who, uh, who's missing stuff and bring him here. Yeah, I think that'd be a good idea. Help folks out. Or we could start charging them. Oh. Turn this into some kind of profit. I don't know if I like that idea as much. Oh yeah, well, it's in this book. Sorry. To jump back to Finn, did you you took the the helm off the um that mannequin? Sure, take a close look at it. Uh, you take the you take it off and uh, oopsie, the uh mannequin tries to smack you, but a twelve misses. <laughs> oh hey, fine now. Uh. Uh, you want to roll initiative? <laughs> Give me a second here. Sorry, <laughs> I'm trying to. Like... Of course, it would be me that triggers that. Um. Okay, we can roll initiative. What the hell? Oh, it must be like on my space. Thing? Yeah, oh. it's on the same space. <laughs> That's older. Hey, bud. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I have a cat in my face now. Dude, now? Come on. Dude. Great, players have advantage. <laughs> I just wanted to read up on that. Oh, every time I do that, I want to do this. Okay, Scoot, so you look over and Finn picks up this helm to look at it, and then all of a sudden this mannequin comes to life and goes to like swat at it, just like backhand Finn to get his uh his helmet back but misses
Dude, you may be muted. I don't know. Nope, I'm just okay. debating on... No worries. I just was like, uh-oh. <laughs> I didn't know if a little one no. came in the room. <laughs> <clears throat> nope. Um... I can't presently get through at the moment. I'm trying to open my spells if there was anything that would be worthwhile. Uh, I think I'll move behind Finn and uh, ready in action if it comes in within uh, my reach. Swing that. Okay. That works. All right. Uh, Finn. Well, this thing's trying to smack me upside the head, so that's not going to fly. I'm gonna stab it. We do. <laughs> that hits for eleven. Um, that's a significant amount of damage. You see, like, I mean, it's a mannequin, so basically, like, you know, just a flesh wound, and it's now missing a full limb. And for his movement, he's gonna flutter up on top of the crate here. The get a bit of high ground going and to also give other people room to, to get in there. He's like holding the, the helm up in the air in the far corner away from the mannequin with his rapier pointing at the mannequin on the other side of him. Like, keep away. Right. <laughs> ah, this is mine, man. And he's mostly, he's got his eyes on you and not, not on your comrades because you've got his helm. Uh, Bryn. Um... Yeah, I think Ben will take a swing at it with his short sword. And then... Unfortunately, that misses. I'm having to turn at the last second to look at Finn. I'm sort of like... I guess it's sort of be defensive where I am. Okay, uh, Vierna. Sorry, I didn't mean to, uh... No, that's fine. Hit the button. Um... So the mannequin's just staring at Finn. Yeah, he's, his eyes are on that helm. He's it's obvious, you know, you probably saw Finn pick it up, and it's like, that's basically, like, that's mine, you know? <laughs> I don't know if I can even... I mean... I, could... I think I can get up there and to have at it with my rapier, but... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you could... Yeah. <laughs> if that's what you want, yeah. I was just, you, you have the space there. You can do that um, if that's what yeah. you want to do. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, you, uh, you find yourself basically, like, at this point, you slashed off its other leg because it's a mannequin. Uh, it's still technically standing, though. Your sneak attack? Oh, yeah, roll your sneak attack. Uh. Oh, my gosh. Jeez. Uh, so, yeah, you are able to just sort of, like, slash off one leg, it falls down, and you head, tis but a flesh wound. And then your uh, final attack just... Will you tell me, how do you do him in? I just kind of, like... Kick it over. I don't know. Like, <laughs> <ugh>. <laughs> that works. So yeah, it boom, crumples to the ground. Um, no longer going after this helm you are holding, Finn. <clears throat> I 
Reminds uh, me of Doctor Who or uh, Supernatural. Yeah, this must be something sweet. Can you guys tell me what this thing does? Any arcanists? I know Mike stepped away, but... I'd say Mike stepped away. We can roll Arcana for him. Cancel. Stop that. Um, or if anybody else wants to... is interested in... I can give it a try, but it's not my... Not my strong suit. I think uh, I think it's a dick for. A what now? A dick for. I ain't not putting no for? dick on my head. Oh, poor Raxon's having a bad night. Yeah. Oh jeez. So Scoot, you're able to look at it, and you're like this. This it's giving off an aura of magic. It's a magic. Magical helmet of some sort, but you aren't sure <coughs> beyond that without, you know, spending some time or... It's definitely a worthwhile item, it. my friend. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been some magic in that old hat I found. So when, they put <laughs> on... <laughs> when they put it on top, it began to dance around. Ironically enough, when you took it off the mannequin, it began to dance around. Things work weird in this weird, this place. Mm -hmm. Well, there's only one way to find out, right? And he proceeds to put the helmet on. Let me. And he proceeds to change into a rat. You put it on, and you don't feel anything. Perhaps if you were to wear it for a full hour and <laughs> get acquainted with it. He, he stands there for a while, like, head cocked to the side, like, wondering, like, does he feel any different? And then he's going to stand ramrod straight. His arms are going to snap forward. And he just starts walking zombie-like towards Rabbit. Deep new head. <laughs> Um, Rabbit's gonna run the hell away from whatever that situation is. Make a perception check, Rabbit, just out of curiosity. All right. I'll... Do you want me to do that? Yeah, yeah. Perception. <laughs> or, or insight, probably. Well, perception, I wanted to see if he saw something, but he does not. Um... Oh yeah, if if you were interested in insight checking him, you know he's joking with you. Yeah. Unless you wanted to roll a deception check, I didn't let you. If you... <laughs> nah, he's just fucking around. <laughs> I grab up my um, stuffed rabbit and rock back and forth a little bit. Oh no! <laughs> oh come on, man! I was just joking. Here, take a shot of this. It'll help you relax. Ah, he pulls out the the forty year old scotch and starts pouring a shot. Uh, <laughs> it, it's uh. Although, would it be scotch in the Forgotten Realms? Is Scotland doesn't exist there? What would it be? Uh, scotch whiskey. <laughs> it's all the same thing, really. It's just how how peaty it is. Yeah. But in any case, you. He, he just, uh, yeah, try this. Just, just down it in one gulp. You'll be good. Yeah, hello. I'll take the shot and, uh, I got, uh, you saved my life, didn't you? Uh, never repay you for that. Maybe I'll write a song, if you will. Yeah, yeah, you do that. Of a, he'll, he'll pass a shot around to everyone. It's like, you know, we all deserve a drink after that whole mess. Never drink bottle alone, anyway.
Yeah, Vansel will definitely take you up on that, and <clears throat> he starts strumming on his, uh, on his loot. <laughs> Telling some tales. So, was there anything else in here that we had not touched upon? Um, there was a... Uh, the noticeable things that may have caught your eye was the uh, of the other noticeable things that may have caught your eye. There was a porcelain jar, um, with a uh, with a chicken chicken leg in it. Yes. For all we know, these are uh, okay. spare tires for the hut. <laughs> there was also a child sized. Coffee, there was right? a child-sized coffin, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not touching that. <laughs> oh, you, you, you gotta. It's a curio. You gotta play with it. Vierna just kind of looks at the, uh, the two calico-looking patches. Uh, dead and, cats. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and just shakes her head at the coffin. <laughs> the cats seem like I mean th they seem quote unquote fine like <laughs> I mean they're not you know hissing or fussing or whatever but you know they're, they've been through something. As we were we were talking about uh, inviting the people from around to get back what they had stolen from them. Yeah, I'll gladly do that since you guys helped me out. I, I'll bring people back here. I, I, I have to still have this. Uh, I believe it was given to us by the the rabbit people, and it pulls out a gourd-looking. A, a golden gourd with a stopper. Oh right. And yes, I, I have it. I was trying to see what she, how she would react to us initially, and she wasn't being very cooperative. So, and maybe we could. Uh, I, I don't know how this works. So we just take the top off, and everything spills out, or the, or or maybe, maybe, maybe we can share not just things from her place but from her bottle with everybody you do remember um, that the Heron gun leader Agdon said that if you touch the top like with your bare hand that's how it sucks away a memory so you don't want to actually touch the cork with your bare hand so you're welcome to attempt to open it, but you you do recall that fact. I think I have mage hand. I could like if you want me to open that, I might be able to with mage hand. Or just put a pair of gloves on. <laughs> yeah. Do we want to try this now? Oh, no town like the present, right? Might help bring a crowd. Well, if you don't mind, Mr. Rabbit, if you want to do your magical goofy hand. Yeah, and I'll be like, press the gidget press the gidget goo, pull the rabbit out of a hat. And, uh, Use my mage hand cantrip to pop the cork off. Yeah, you pop the cork off and you watch as like shimmery, like oh, it's almost like fog, mist, purple, pink, yellow, all these colorful shimmer, shimmery mists swirl out of the bottle and just and like go out. I don't know if she's got a chimney in this house, but it's out the chimney, out the windows, out the doors, just makes their way out of this house. As none of you had any memories 
None of you gave up any memories. Nothing makes its way to you. Um. But it seems to go out into the ether. Hey, that's great. <clears throat> Well, that's great. We, we've provided memories back to people. We're getting items back to people, but uh, I don't know if we've done anything about the water. Maybe that'll come yeah. in time. That's a great point. Um, I think as he says that, Verna kind of like like well I'll say yeah I want to see if we can see outside I'm assuming there's no windows in this room right? yeah not in the room you're currently in but you know there are windows in the, the main bedroom this is like the closet uh, yeah. window here and, yeah. I'm trying to <laughs> my screen's not big enough Um, I'll move to the window do I see like a difference outside or does it still look sad <clears throat> It, yeah, it right now looks the exact same. Didn't we meet some water spirit or something? That moose? Oh. Yeah, the oracle. Wasn't her area, like, pure? Yes, her area was still pure. Um, it hadn't quite... Like, you could tell as you're walking up north walking river stream um it was slowly spreading um but it seemed like her area was for the time being still somehow protected it just you know kind of lucky maybe maybe with uh bad Lorma gone maybe that moose fella will uh be able to Help things purify? I don't know. Um, uh, and if it's a swamp, doesn't that shit take, like, time? Maybe it just needs to drain on its own. Didn't we see a, like, gross well thing on the first floor? Yes, so the first floor of her hut had a giant swimming pool that had very little water in it and it looked like it's because the well going feeding it was like clogged or something maybe there was those lily pads we were afraid of or yeah, there cautious, was a, I should say right yeah there was a lily pad like a big one in her pool and one of us has um, like a infinite thing of water, right? We have a jug of water. Never Somebody ending water. Yeah. Um, I say to the group, this might be absurd, but what if we poured the jug of water into that uh, pool thing. Certainly wouldn't hurt none, no. I could try it. I think it's a good idea. Uh, Fen will escort Jackson over. I believe Jackson has it. Or fill on the Pope. Probably take a good. Uh, and I didn't want to injure um, robbing of mannequins if you still want to look for stuff, but I think we should keep that on our radar. I apologize. What was that? Oh, sorry. Um, Verna is saying, and I didn't want to rob you of your um, relieving the mannequins of their 
helmets, but I think the pool could be on our radar. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. I mean, hey, it's it's a Fey thing. You you, you kill someone, you take their stuff. It's it's just the way things work. <laughs> He just shrugs and, and walks towards the pool with uh, Jackson. You guys going going back downstairs to the pool? I think so. Unless there's oh, anything what? left in here. Not just yet. I'm still kind of curious. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll I'm be sorry. patient. I'll be patient. <laughs> uh, I'm still kind of curious about this jar with chicken leg. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me open that back up. I had moved on, Jason. So, gotta find it. <laughs> um, yeah, it's the Fey realm. Maybe you'll find a wishbone. Uh, you roll a investigation check to see how much detail you can spot. Oh. Why are you gonna keep asking for the one? It's a uh, it's a, it's it's a mystery. It's a murder mystery. No. Um. You're looking inside this jar. Um, it's it's a clay. Uh, uh, or no, no, no. I'm sorry. The jar is not clay. The jar is a porcelain jar that sits uh, a a bunch of clay, like a clay mold for it. Um, and it uh, has these two uh, chicken legs painted on the outside of it. Uh, Try to open it, but you're having a hard time opening it to see. Uh. Yeah, I'm. Uh, is it something we can carry with us? Yeah, it's it's to it fits in like your hand. It's not that big. I know this sounds a little weird, but uh, <clears throat> this might have something to help us out with. You, you never know what these strange, ugly hags have up their sleeves. Well, you do. You just wore her dress. <laughs> Welcome back, Jackass. Thank you. <laughs> you completely missed the combat. <laughs> much here. It wasn't, no. Oh. <clears throat> um I feel like I know you made an investigation, but if you want you could try to make a like a I feel like this should be more of a sleight of hand thing. You could try that. Depending on if you, oh yeah, you still the way the, the lid like it's like twists and turns. Yeah. It's stupid. It's stupid, is what it is. It shouldn't be this hard to open this jar. Well, that's just <laughs> the way it is. <laughs> All right, hand it over here. Let someone with a little muscle do that. Ben tries his hand at, at brute force in the jar. Okay. Athletics or just strength? Uh, oh, yeah, I, I, yeah, see if that's just a strength roll. Yeah, so you're able to basically, you, you, you might have actually broken it a little bit trying to get it cracked open. <laughs> but you open it, and uh, sure enough, Finn, inside is a broken wishbone. So it's like oh. the two pieces, the two halves of a wishbone. It's already broken. Here, look. He pours the contents out into uh, his hands. <clears throat> Rabbit's hands. Well, that's weird. Oh. 
Looks like just plain old bones to me. Can I take a look at that? And uh, Raxon, if he can figure out hide or uh, heads or tails of this thing, he's going to try. Well, Ben did crack it open, so the bottle's now open, and it may not be able to be resealed. Um, but yeah, inside is just the two halves of the wishbone. But you can, yeah, you can look, oh, look at either one. There's nothing special about the wishbone. It's well, good. if you yes, you can look at the wishbone if that's what you're. I wanted to make sure. Yeah. I yeah. So yes, you can investigate Arcana. All right. Uh, let's do investigate. Hmm. It's weird. Well, obviously weird. someone was the winner and someone was the loser. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um... Could I do detect magic on it and see yeah. if it glows? Yeah, so you see that there's a very faint tint of magic. And that's on the jar or on, on the, the on the bones, on the on the which bones? <laughs> Magic bones, I present to you all. <laughs> well, that's interesting. So, like, what do they do? Like, really good if sleep? Any, anybody who wants can also I make a wisdom check. I feel like could be another... The rapper would kind of take a peek at it if he's asking. <laughs> um. Yeah, rabbit. Hang on. Rabbit and Vierna, you both almost at the same time. Think. I mean, the wishbone gets pulled apart. What happens if we were to put it back together? Elementary. Seems quite obvious. And we're like, do like fusion. And we'll both have one end and fusion! Ha! Someone's wish will be revoked, I imagine. So as you, you're, you're putting the two pieces together? The fusion? Ha! Uh, yeah. You see a bit of like wind swirl around it and you hear uh, <clears throat> all around the room Scabatha, Scabatha, Scabatha forgets the first creature she s up with. Although her memory returns each night, night, night when she a creature forgotten by Scabatha in this manner is invisible to her. Rabbit grabs his rabbit and starts riding back and forth. <laughs> you kind of went like vacant there for a bit. You all right? Oh, uh, uh, we're the only ones that heard it. No, it was it like. It came from the wishbone and kind of like echoed throughout the room. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that was weird. Maybe you should write that down, Jackson. What was that? <laughs> I thought so. I've already forgotten myself. I haven't. And I'll start writing it in that book. And I'll be like, this is going to be my metal era. 
Rock on, witches, dude. Witches and blah, 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 blah. Witches and black masses. Dun, dun, dun. Well, then. You t- gonna talk about the coffin in the room? The literal child's coffin? Well, uh, someone's gotta do it. We just pretend it goes away. <laughs> I almost promised you we were gonna find like a marionette or some devilish shit in there. It's you could uh, make a wish on this wishbone. Uh, it's already broken. We put it back together. Somebody though, already right? did make a wish. <laughs> Maybe after making a wish, that's what happened to her. Now they're in a coffin. We should see what's inside. Do you agree? Yep. Pop her open. Ben will go over there and figure, uh, if there's latches or something, he'll pop them open. If it's just like the nailed down coffin, he'll try to pry it open with his dagger. Um, I'm assuming there's no like writing or naming or anything on the box? Well, on the coffin, you do see what you presume to be a name that just says uh, uh, Keanu. Keanu? Yeah, Keanu. Keanu. (laughs) Maybe Neo's in there. Yeah, you're welcome to make a athletics or yeah, I assume athletics is probably the best for you. Yeah, you're able to Try it open. Um, nothing's actually inside. I was expecting a baby in an overcoat and black sunglasses. Now, I will say you might. It's been a few weeks, so I will remind the players. Um, when you met Clapperclaw, that little um, scarecrow, um, he uh, he said that he was a child who died and whose soul was brought back to live in the scarecrow oh okay so we'll this is a small coffin so like this can go in someone's bag Ooh, I don't know if it's that small how big are y'all's bags not mine I'm freaking fairy but <laughs> It doesn't say how big it is. A child-sized casket. Um, I mean, I imagine it's still like it's two, two it's feet. Ba- baby Bjorn sized. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So taking it with is probably I mean, not... it would fit. It would fit in a suitcase, maybe like a large suitcase. But I don't know how big y'all's bags are. If they're Let's like, <laughs> I'm trying to. Hey, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. <laughs> Sorry. Paint a picture for you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm messing with you too much. Um, <laughs> was was yeah. As far as like all the other items that we we are recovering for lost people, is Clapperclaw missing anything? Um, he was missing his head, and Raxon returned that because okay. you guys actually found that at the uh, rabbit hut, rabbit, okay. whatever that was called. The hutch. Yeah. <laughs> it was a tree stump they lived in. So he should be fine. He doesn't need this, right? No, I, yeah. You don't think he needs it, but... Backstory. Yep, yeah, I'll let him know it's here for sentimental reasons. Maybe he wants to retrieve it. I'm now just suddenly picturing a, a, a large boar walking around with a child-sized coffin on his back. Oh, that's true. You could probably utilize the large boar to carry that. 
Only if you ask nicely. Uh, we have reason to see Clabberclaw again. Uh, Clabberclaw went to go get the uh, hot air balloon for you so you can get out of here. Oh, so that would be yes. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, might as well bring it with. Never know. If it doesn't want it, you can just pitch it over the side. I kind of feel like we're probably pressing our luck in here. We haven't had too many catastrophes other than that Anakin over there. Illusions of adequacy. We should probably get out of here. Uh, Vierna, you're saying something about that pool for Draxon's, uh water jug mm -hmm. we can go down to it I think it's three or four stories down now but we can make our way down there oh yeah we can do that I'll move in the here um, I'm gonna put you guys all close together and snag you all. So you get down the stairs back to the living room area. Um, and then, uh, as, as you go out to the hallway to the uh, stair, the spiral staircase. Bryn, you remember that when you were fighting Bavlorna, you screamed for uh, Apple Bottom, and uh, the, uh, the staircase is a little torn up. <laughs> the bottom, running up there. So, you guys can climb down the stairs, but you're probably going to want to be careful doing it, so. though. Yeah, I think I'll try to be careful to try it down till Apple to come last. Um, you are you do recall there is another staircase that you spotted um that had the like broken steps at the bottom. So either way, both staircases are now a little compromised, but I think we can manage. Um, so yeah, if, if y'all are going down the stairs, just make a dexterity saving throw for me. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh oh. All of us? Yeah, unless you've got another way to walk down the stairs. Fall. Yeah, it's just, just there's just water down there, right? Yeah. So, Scoot, Bryn, and Vierna, you 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 slip a couple times, but you're able to catch your balance. Nothing, nothing bad uh, happens to you. But a little ironic that I feel like the dexterous characters for the <laughs> had an kinda... issue with the stairs. We were too confident. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, I'll drag you guys back down to the other map. Uh-oh. Oh man. I want to grab you all. I think I'll be taking dead bodies with me, but that's okay. And Apple's not in the pool. That's just where she dropped, so... Um, <clears throat> so as a refresher, since it has been a while since you have seen this, um, obviously the big thing in the middle of the room is this giant pool that only has about a foot of water in it. Um, you can see in the middle here sticking up is like the top of a well that 
presumably water comes out of. Uh, over here is a giant lily pad just bobbing away on top of the uh, on top of the the, the the water. This water is also very stagnant and gross and not pretty. Um, what? Uh, there's tables and shelves and just like upstairs in the bedroom, you, there's a, it's a mess down here. There's like leftover food and plates. A little less messy, but still pretty gross. And then over here in this uh, corner, kind of by where you guys are standing up in the upper right corner, um, you see uh, uh, some mannequins wearing clothes of various various size mannequins and various size clothes. Uh, yeah. Smoky. Out of the way. Uh-uh. Oh, there's also this mirror sitting in the pool, too. I didn't mention. Oh, by the way, Raxon, since you weren't here when it happened, the reason we got into a combat is because Finn took a helm off a uh, off a mannequin, and he's now wearing this helm. He doesn't know what it does. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's called the helm of a dummy. Yep. yep. Rax is going to come over here, wade into the pool, take out the decanter of endless water, point it straight down, Rip off the top and hold on for dear life. Woof! Do you have that item? I don't remember what it does when that happens. Uh, it's a geyser. It produces 30 gallons of water that gushes forth at 30 feet long and one foot wide. It's a bonus action. While holding the decanter, I can aim it at a creature or I can uh, point it at an object. Um... Thank you. Okay. So the idea here is to uh, try to do what they um, do at light lakes. They have like the big um, forceful fire hose and then spray it in the water and they just kind of fly up using the uh, stream of water. Right, yeah. Um, why are you being this way? Oh, no. I did not mean to do that. It was that forceful. Yeah, apparently the whole the whole dang house moved. I was in the wrong layer. That's why I was doing weird things. <laughs> That's not what it looks like. Um, okay. Sorry about that. I don't know how to use... <laughs> Oh, funny, apparently. Um, so... Uh, you want to roll a 1d4 for me? <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> Four points. Is that how much I damage I take from getting slammed against the ceiling? No, I'd say the ceiling is high and well, we're gonna just pretend like it's high enough, I guess. Um how much movement? Uh roll the one D four again. Wow, okay. Um, as you're standing there, shh, after a while you hear blub, 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 shh. Um, and out um, pops this, genat this giant gelatinous cube. Um, and 
how high would you be? Does it get a... Nope, just has melee attack. Okay, well, it's just going to sit there and sort of, like, wait for you to fall into him. Um, let's roll initiative. That's... Is... Unexpected. Yeah. <laughs> Gross. Uh, sorry, I wasn't ready. I got excited. I always forget to bring up the track. There's always room for jello, I guess. Okay. Now, now we can roll initiative. Who didn't drink? Okay. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Cancel. Did I think Bierna? Can you roll again, Bierna? Thank you. Awesome. Change. Oh wait. Did oh, did I select the dancing light each time? Oh, is that what happened? I think so. Cause yeah. The dancing light is showing as the 17.8. That was my last one. Or 17.18. Oh my heavens to Betsy. Okay, I just moved to Dancing the Light. So, there we go. <laughs> awesome. Sorry, that was... It's okay. <laughs> confusing. Okay. We're just gonna... I don't know, is it my mouse? Is my mouse dying? I am trying to... Now fix it so that it's in the right turn order. And nothing is happening. You guys remember that intelligent gelatinous cube from uh, Out of the Abyss? Yeah, it's Luke or something. Yeah, that's it. Oh yeah, wow, you remember his name? I think, it may not have exactly been that. But... It's really cool. <laughs> we, we let him die. <laughs> I know. Well, we don't know, he's just like, we were, we we're trying to cross something, right? I just remember yeah. he couldn't like make it and he just sort of like oozed down into whatever abyss. Yeah, so it's those just... NPCs all like fell off one by one. Yeah, you guys <laughs> were off. Remember the two little gnome, like deep gnomes that we managed they... to get? We managed to get them home. Yeah, they stuck around. Well, one got turned into a statue from like a Medusa Gorgon. Oh, or yeah. Because <laughs> they were like twins, I think. And so they Yeah, were... I think so. Yeah, I think one did get turned into a statue. Yeah. Uh, all right, so Finn, you see Rax and, and all of a sudden this gelatinous cube pops out of this, um, uh, this, this well. And it's just sort of jiggling there. And you see, like, you know, like, maybe a bullywug skeleton in there. Little help here. <laughs> so yeah, Finn, you're up. Are you forfeiting? Are you just waiting, holding an action? Are you guys talking to me? I'm slow. 
Oh, he's uh, he's sending. He's yeah, Mark had it stopped talking from his dental stuff, so he's just typing. He's doing sign language now. Um, let's. Oh. What would a lasso okay, be? Would that be? No, Can you're fine. Day. Yeah, no, he's typing it out. So he's creating a lasso to try to lasso Rax and to get him away from the cube. Um. <clears throat> yeah, I was gonna say I wasn't sure if it'd be Dex or strength based. Uh, Raxon, what's your AC? Might be. AC. Is I'd say. 15. I, yeah, I'd say, sure, especially. What was that? It's probably a willing target. See, yes. that's the thing, too. I was going to say, I think he's willing. So, yeah, I'll say 16. That works. You're able to whoosh, kind of rope it around. Maybe maybe you don't get too far past his arms because of the water. You know, him holding the, uh, the, the jug. So maybe it's more a little close to his neck than his waist. Um, yeah, that works. This is an odd, yeah, so yeah, you're able to pull him a little bit. Oh, you're over there, so yeah, you'll be pulling a little bit like this way, yeah. And, and for the time being, until we get to Rex's turn, it's still the water pouring out. <laughs> I don't know what EOT means. End of turn. Oh, end of turn. Thank you. I have not seen that acronym. All right. Um, uh, Bryn. Touch it. Gross. And I'm going to climb up onto the back of the apple bottom. Your mic got weird. Oh, your mic is down by your chin. Yeah. There and then, uh, yeah, so I'm going to climb on the back of Apple Bottom, and uh, I'm going to draw my short bow, and I'm going to shoot in it. Well, first I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to shoot an arrow at it, see if it hit it. Well, 17 hit. Um, yes. All right, and then, um, so I'm going to shoot it, and then I'm going to mark it as favored foe. Um... Which will allow me to do an additional 1d4 points of damage. And that'll be my turn. You're muted. Thank you. Um, you watch this, uh, your arrow bloop, 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 go into this cube, but it does like a bit of jelly kind of pops off, so. I got it a little bit. All right, Raxon, your go. All right. Uh, Raxon's going to take a step over here, uh, <laughs> drop the, the decanter, and immediately, let's see. He's going to fire rays of, well, fire. Three of them. Wow, those all hit. Dang. Nice. Okay. 2d6 on each of them. Yep. So 13.3. Okay. That, wow, you see... Ch -ch -ch Hitting that, hitting that cube, and it's, it's, uh, it took those hits. You see Jelly kind of fling off and into the, into the pool, back down into the well. <laughs> Alright, uh, he'll brace for impact. Um, Vierna. Um... I will... 
are you? Can I move away? Is there? Because everybody's kind of surrounding me, so I can't really move, can I? Oh, you, you can move through your ally spot. You can't stand in the same spot, but you can move okay. through. Yeah. I'm going to kind of, like, move over here and just, like, hold my action to see if it, like, moves, like, towards us at all. Um, maybe... Oh, sorry. My computer's still being really weird. Um, okay. I was um, move like one square more, but um, sorry. Yeah, yeah no, that would make a perception check for me if you want. Oh, okay. Well, that's a big old cube. It's, it looks scary. <laughs> yeah, um, but I'm I'm just gonna hold my action to see if it like moves towards us. Yeah. Um, so trying to give people room to cast spells, so I wanted to be a little bit out of the way. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, get some light. Whatever. I I can't seem to delete that. Scoot. You are up next. Well, <clears throat> yeah. I don't have any spells good enough for this. So, if anything, I'm going to make my way over this side. And just kind of uh, prepare, ready in action, I guess. I, it's, as stupid as it sounds. It... <clears throat> how how deep was the water? It's only it's not very deep. Yeah, so it's only um, a few inches deep. Um, roll a perception check for me. I can roll it. Asking's another story. So, it's only a few inches deep, but since the gelatinous cube has come out of this well, you can see the pool is starting to fill up. But you think it's filling up somewhat slowly. Um, so, for at least a little while, you literally... Before the pool fills up and it's... Yeah, I think I'll just stay here and hold my action, though. Um, okay, it's the gelatinous cube's turn. Um, let me see, where are you gonna go, gelatinous cube? It's gonna go straight forward. And it can't... Uh, can't really get up the side there. Um, and it's just gonna try to... Um, actually, I think it may try to... Five feet? Yeah. It is gonna try and just sort of smack at, uh, at Apple Bottom with its jelly arm. But totally misses. Good. I didn't roll for a so I'm just gonna have him in the corner unless you guys, if you guys end up needing his help, I'll add him in. Um. <clears throat> okay, Finn. Loki.
Yeah, totally. You can do that. It's about the top of it is probably like a foot below you. What the crap? That's not cool. Man, you just you slice a chunk out of this thing. <laughs> Rin. Sorry, I got excited, Finn. I assumed that was... And now I see you move. Okay. Uh, Bryn. Uh, I'm gonna have Apple, uh, on her, uh, do a, um... I forget what it's called. Uh, the oh, retreat. The... Uh, what can you... What's it? Ah. What is it when you move... So that, there's an actual the name for it. Uh, disengage action? Disengage, yeah. Oh, disengage, yeah. okay. So I have her yeah. disengage and trot. Uh, I forget what her movement is. I think it's 30, isn't it? Yeah, or it's 20. So. 40. No, four, oh, 40, okay. <laughs> I think I have her disengage and trot around, and as she's doing that, I will uh, shoot an arrow at that thing. Uh, yeah, that hits. See, uh, you watch as so that's a... another two damage to it as favored enemy. Gotcha. Thank you. All right. Yeah, you guys have it, it. It's shrunken in size at this point with the slashes and the arrows and the zippy zaps. Uh. All right. Awesome, Raxon. Ooh, back to me. All right. Um, let's send a little bit of fire at him, if we can. Yeah. Uh, that, that also hits. You might be surprised. Wow. Here. Yes. This guy has been living the life stuck in this well and hasn't, I don't know. I'm gonna have to burn some jello to find out what this actually smells like. Right. <laughs> yeah, you see a bloop, little plop, little chunk plops off. Um, yeah, probably. Cool, that's that it for you? That's all I got. Alrighty, Vierna. I'm hoping we'll finish this off the next couple rounds, guys. I know it's ten, but... <laughs> uh, Vierna. Uh. Um... Hmm. So it's a little okay. higher up at this point. If you wanted to engage in melee, you could reach it. But... Yeah, I know. I... My sword might get sticky. Um, <laughs> I, ugh, gross. I'm gonna take out. Well, if I take out, what did I say I had out earlier? My rapier or my short sword? Well, it doesn't really matter. Um, ugh. All ugh, gross. <laughs> Go up and Ugh. stab it with my rapier and hope that it doesn't get stuck. Oh, yeah, you're able to totally just 
flash in there and you can tell as as you get up and close and you do that it, it it's it's honestly like you know a fifth of its size at this point it's <laughs> okay. it's got pieces floating in the pool now uh scoot Well, as this thing diminishes, the water rises a little. I'm going to be brave enough to uh, come along beside it. Splishing, splashing, and I'll give it a stab with a deck. Good. Um... Okay. Lost my foot. Hang on. You entered the water. Yeah. Um. <laughs> make a dexterity mm -hmm. saving throw as you entered the water. Okay. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm trying here. I'm trying. It's not you. It's, uh, no, I know. It's the um, digital dice. I need to switch them out somehow. Um, <laughs> so you end up taking... Uh, what is it? Uh, three points of acid damage as you enter the water. <laughs> three points? Yeah, just, just three. Because you're just in the water. You're not in the cube. Um, and you, uh, and for the time being, your dagger is floating inside the gelatinous cube. But you were so brave! I'm so stupid, apparently. <laughs> tomato, tomato, you know? <sighs> Um, yeah. Okay, so unfortunately, the cube's turn is next. Um, and it is going to try to engulf you, what is left. <laughs> Yummy. Um, so make another dexterity saving throw. It's another six. Oh. It's worse. <laughs> um. Alrighty. <laughs> so yeah, you take. Oh, does it doesn't say. I have to. It's. Really. You could... take 10 points of acid damage. Survivable for now. And at this point, you cannot breathe. You are restrained. Um. I am useless as I was before I got there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Finn, you watch your buddy try to be brave and like, I got this, and go in and... Boom. <laughs> yep, that's exactly what happened. Poor cleric. Um, yeah, that'll do it. So yeah, you basically whoosh, slice the remains of this gelatinous in half, um, and you're able to free <laughs> Scoot so he can breathe again. Uh, although the water is continuing to rise, uh, so you may want to get up from the water so that <laughs> you don't drown. I'm better off crawling out of here than trying to stand up. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, you're given a fin. You're given a. You're given, fin gives you a a <laughs> rope. You're given a fin, uh, and uh, you're able to crawl out. I'm not gonna make you roll for that one. <laughs> You've got buddies to help you. <laughs> Gladly take uh, the assistance. Yes, I will definitely uh, accept the rope and get down to. Uh, dry, safe passage, and take a shower with his clothes on. <laughs> now let that be a lesson to y'all. You think you're hot shit, you just wait till you slip and slide. <laughs> So yeah, as you get up, you can see the pool begins to fill. The pool is only about three and a half feet deep. It's not still not super deep. It's more like a wading pool. Um, but it does eventually fill back up, although the water is still this, like, swampy, green, nasty water. Um, but you were able to clear it out. Uh, uh, I think unless anybody else wants to do anything else before we wrap it up for the night, I think that's a great stopping point. And with the victory, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Lots of fun as always. Yeah. Indeed. Good, good. All right. <laughs> well, good night, everyone. Yeah, y'all yeah, have a great, good night. Great week. <laughs> <laughs>